Thank you very much. I'm glad to see all of you. And those of you who know me well know that you do not have to take out pencil and paper as you would for a real lecturer. Um, I talked with Tremia and I talked with Chris and neither although they are experts on their job, but neither knew exactly what I was supposed to do, what I am supposed to do. And you could say that um, if my dear friend, late friend, uh, Ron Jordan were here, he'd say, whatever it is, make it short. <laughs> but they gave me a certain time to do something, and. So I'll try to do it. I thought maybe it would be kind of good for me to share with you some of my background to kind of give you an idea of why I do what I do. And I don't know whether that's OK. Is that OK, Dave? All right. <laughs> Dave Johnson was my doctor, although he was a medical doctor. He's also my psychiatrist, too, <laughs> along with the late Dr. Ellison, who was here. Um, I, um, I was born in Henderson, North Carolina, Vance County, one of the smallest counties in, in North Carolina, kind of a hotbed for the KKK. And it's kind of difficult for me to say what, when I started drawing, and I've shared this with many, many, uh, several of you, but I'll, for those people who haven't heard me run off at the mouth about what happened when I was a little boy, my mother says that um, I sat on her lap and I would draw in the air when I was about two, two and a half, and she said that the older ladies now, I'm not being sexist, I'm just telling you the way it is, because I guess older men could care less about a kid <laughs> riding in the air. But the older ladies said, Viola, that boy of yours is touched. <laughs> How many of you know what that means? <laughs> okay. It was later on that I asked my I said, why would you let somebody say your son is half nuts? She said, well, they didn't know what they were talking about. Because I actually did that when I was in high school, too. But I did it, you know, sitting at my desk, and I would kind of draw. And when I was a kid, and librarians don't want to hear this, but it, it's unfortunate that the borders on most of my books had drawings in them. And we rented, when I was in elementary school, we rented our books. And at the end of the year, you, the teacher gave out erasers and you could erase, but she didn't give them to me because the books were so messed up with drawings <laughs> that my parents just had to pay the fee for the books. Um, it was kind of a, anytime I had paper, I would draw. And unfortunately, that the kids here in Spotsylvania and Fredericksburg and Stafford and, and surrounding area, their vocabulary in art was greater than mine when I was a freshman at Virginia State College back in 1953. I didn't have a vocabulary. But my teachers encouraged me to draw. And my parents, who did not have a, a lot of formal education, uh, encouraged me and, but, and provided, you know, paper. Every Christmas, I would get a watercolor set. And the watercolor set was used up by the time we went back to school in January. And so I didn't have much in a way of training, and I didn't have, and I'll, I'll share that with you as I move on through high school and then get to college very briefly. Um, 
In high school, I did posters for the teachers. I learned to draw the skeleton and all of the bones, except for those tiny metacarpals and metatarsals, without looking in the book. The digestive system without looking in the book because I drew them so much. Each year, the, even though I wasn't taking biology I, at the time, uh, I did it for the biology uh, teacher. And so I was known for being able to draw, uh, but not, not having any, any skill beyond, I guess you might say, well, maybe drawing skills that were a little above average. But I had that insatiable desire to draw. So I would, uh, in high school, you could get a pad of typing paper. Uh, Marguerite Young would remember that if she were here. Uh, about that thick for 25 cents. And I would go up to Alfred's on the main street in Henderson. That's Garnet Street and also Route 1. And I'd get that pad of paper and I would draw on it. Nothing earth shaking, but I would draw on it. And I would finish that stack of paper by Sunday evening. Uh, and I, I saved those drawings and I'll jump ahead for a moment. And my last count I had based on counting one section and getting 500 sheets, I had about 2,000 some drawings that my sister, her sophomore year in college, came home and was, and you know how sometimes people, women and, well, I'm going to be hard on women a little bit tonight. <laughs> they get that desire to straighten out and clean. And so, mother, I'm going to clean out his room. And she threw away that box. And we both sat on the bed and cried uh, when she did that. And I was probably too boy, but uh, Emory Walker would tell you that I cry very easily anyway, so it's not, a, not too much of a problem. But I, I tell people now to save your drawings, save what you do, because you never know. And you'll see a drawing that I had saved for, I know, the last 20 years, and what I did with that later on as, as we talk. Um, but when I was a senior, it was determined by me that I wanted to go to college and major in art. Did not ever have art taught. And my homeroom teacher, who was a former matron at Bennett College, was able to talk to the art instructor, one of the artists there at Bennett College, by the name of Macmillan. And she got Mr. Macmillan to come to Henderson and show about 15 of his paintings and presented it at our assembly. And I met him and I was in awe of all that he had done. Now if I jump ahead, and I hope you don't mind my scattering since you're not taking notes. 25 years later, Mr. Macmillan's wife is in my living room out in Spotsylvania buying a painting from me. So I said, it's, it's a small world. Um, but Mrs. Avent, whom I love dearly, she said, you will not be happy doing anything but your art. Now, I wanted to teach and I wanted to be a competent artist. But there were no teaching jobs in my hometown, my white counterpart, because the schools were not integrated, my white counterpart had to suffer too. A high school senior at Henderson High couldn't have art, didn't have it, because it wasn't provided. And so even though we, we felt very often that it was not separate but equal, in this case, it was equal in the sense that neither school had art education and none of the elementary schools. And it's so vital, and I'm, I, I guess I plug a little bit when I talk about the arts. It's so important. Now, my parents couldn't, I had students when I went to James Monroe and <laughs> showed the winged victory of Samothrace 
that's at the um, Louvre and also the Mona Lisa. And I had students say, Mr. Johnson, I just saw this last summer. I said, oh my goodness, you know. <laughs> it's just amazing uh, how economically speaking, uh, some things can be provided that will help to nurture certain things like an appreciation for the arts and so forth uh, based on uh, economics. So I took Ms. Avent's advice and I enrolled at Virginia State College in art education. It was a fine arts degree in art education where you were heavy into methods and you end up having um, jewelry, create, uh, drawing, painting, an assortment of semesters of, of studio work. And I had in my little outline that I was going to tell you about a situation that was kind of funny for me because I didn't have an art vocabulary. So my freshman year in drawing class, I was asked to, uh, I was doing a, a little sculpture. She gave me some clay to work with and I was doing a little sculpture and I had this woman standing on a, on, a, on a hill. Now, since it was a sculpture, you can't say that I didn't put a bathing suit on, but anyway, <laughs> my, my art teacher said, Johnny, a woman's breast is not made like you. They are just not stuck on <laughs> like that. And so she, this, I hope you all understand this, because uh, I guess it's going on the computer, but I, it's just one of those things. <laughs> so she called me up to the front of the class. And she said, now, I want you to feel my breast. <laughs> feel it and see how this must feel right there. And somebody, some guy in the class said, go ahead, Johnny P. <laughs> I was so country and I was so embarrassed. She said, you see how that muscle runs all the way back there? They're not stuck on them. That was really embarrassing. The next situation was the head of the department was teaching basic drawing. And she said, we want to do a gesture drawing. I didn't know what a gesture drawing was. So there was the model, and I was to do a gesture. She said, you have, I think, a minute to do this. And so we started the drawing. Everybody was moving. And time was up. I had an eye <laughs> on the paper after the minute, and Harold from New Jersey, who had gone to an all hot school, had scribbled. And she teacher came over, and you could say honey and touch somebody then. It was not sexual harassment. And she was kind of old anyway. <laughs> and she came over, and she touched me on the shoulder. She said, honey, that's not a gesture, John. Do you, you see what Harold has? And when I looked over there and I saw that little chicken scratch, so to speak, I said, I know I'm in the wrong place now. I've, I've <laughs> but it, it began to come but, uh, along with me. And I, I felt a little bit secure because they saw in some ways uh, I didn't have that touch to give you the drawings that, 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 that your high school and some of your uh, younger kids in school now have because they have been taught. Played basketball in college, and it probably, and I, I wanted to be very honest in this lecture, probably I was more concerned about people seeing me as an athlete than seeing me as a fine arts major because there were things that they said about art majors, and I think you, you know, and so I, I had a problem. I have regretted it ever since that my attitude was that way, but that's the way I was brought up. Somebody was assisted because they acted a certain way, and I did not want that, but I, I say that, and I admit that because that's not the way I feel, and that's not the way I treated people 
who were who had lifestyles were different. I was always very sensitive to that, but I wanted people to see me as a as a as an athlete and not. So you didn't see me a whole lot with my portfolio or a sketch pad out on the campus. Probably would be a better artist now had I done that. But anyway, coming out of college and coming up to Fredericksburg to teach um, and meeting Gene has a lot to do with the kind of person that I am now and the artist in me that never feels that he is, has reached any... I, get, I tell you what happens in Fredericksburg. People can spoil you, but I think that I'm humbled enough to not, what, not take in what people say about me. And that's the countryness in me, because uh, everybody is somebody. But I have found out if you teach somebody's child and the children love you, then they love you. And so I have a, I've taught so many students I have a lot of people who love me, and sometimes they love me enough to say anything. <laughs> For example, I had a person who met me once I began to show other kinds of work other than just the representational. I had a lady come to me and she says, uh, Johnny, uh, now I don't know anything about art, but I think you are regressing. I, I say it under my breath, I, 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 think, I think, I understand that you don't know much about art. <laughs> the late Pete Hearn, I, God bless, rest his soul, Pete told me, he said, Johnny, I don't think I'm going to buy any more paints from you until you go back to what you were doing in the late 60s. I said, well, Pete, I'm not sure that you're going to be able to do that. Uh, but what happens, I wanted to talk to you from the standpoint of being an African-American, and I'll use the term black because I used it probably more than I've used African-American. But I want to tell you that I am very sensitive to, I don't carry the race on my shoulder, but I'm aware that there are certain expectations for some black artists, some performers, some artists, uh, visual artists and so forth. I have a concern, and I had it when I, I went to Howard. Some of my paintings dealing with social issues were paintings that you had to look at and then try to figure out what was being said. And so I had some people who were much younger to say to me, why don't you try to let the people know what you're talking about? I said, well, I don't feel that as an artist that I should think that black people are not intellectually sharp enough to look at something and then come up with their own view of something or their own way of interpreting it. But, uh, and so I've, 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 I've done that a lot. I did it a lot back in the late 60s and the 70s except, you know, the things that are obvious, like what I'm going to talk about, the mother and child, and I'll give you a little background on, on that. But getting here in Fredericksburg and getting settled, and I said Jean was a sobering experience, uh, influence in my life, and she, she really did. I don't know where I would be if it weren't for her be, becoming a part of my life, uh, because I was, I was, Concern, but I, I could have been very reckless. <laughs> I think a lot of men in here could admit that. <laughs> um, I started painting watercolors because we were staying, after we were married, we were staying in an apartment, and I had oils and I had watercolors. And I loved, I loved the oils. I loved working with oils. But with my schedule, uh, two years after I got here, uh, they said the rationale was that if you played basketball in college, you'd be a good line coach on the football team. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how, how that happens, but it so happened that Walker Grant at that time had four men on the staff. 
And so I had to be the line coach. And Buddy Ham and Oliver Griffin and all, we had one of the biggest lines in the state of Virginia at that time and did pretty well. For those of you who don't know, who are not from Fredericksburg, Walker Grant, small school. We never had, when I was teaching there, we never had over 155 students in nine through 12, but we kicked some butt. <laughs> Bigger schools, we really kicked them. I see Norcom, Booker T of Suffolk, we, 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 Hoffman, Boston, all the schools we played, I, maybe with one exception, maybe there aren't any exceptions, all the schools we played were larger. But then they use the rationale, Johnny, you get along well with people, and so you will make a good administrator. I said, but I'm not interested. Well, just think about this. When you retire, I said, you know, 60 years from now, I'm not thinking about retirement. So they made me assistant principal over at Walker Grant and took away some of the classes that I was teaching, and then I still had the art. But my time was tied up, so watercolor was something I could do when I got back home. When, when you're a line coach, you are the flunky, especially in a small school, because all the injuries you have to take to Mary Washington. And Dr. Harrington, he won't, make, won't admit it, but we have to make him here in this town. He was the only um, orthopedic surgeon. And so when I had two things, who is this doctor, John? Dr. Ellison. Who do you want to call? I said, Dr. Ellison is going to tell me to call Baldwin Harrington. So that's what we did. And I got home late, ended up with an ulcer, and that's another story. But let me tell you what my first exhibit in Fredericksburg was at the community center. And I did... Uh, after Shelton was born, I guess I was the dumbest and proudest father in the world. Um, the lady told me up at the hospital, was, you know, Ms. Johnson, you can't be here. And I said, it's my baby. I can take pictures of my baby. No, you can't be in here. I said, okay, thank you. But anyway, Shelton would reach for me. At, he would say, take daddy, when I would come up the steps at our apartment. And I did a painting of, that was a homage to all fathers with him I'm reaching down for him. And I, somebody told me, he said, you ought to show that to the community. I said, it's too sentimental. And uh, they said, well, I think I would do it. So I, I put my little str lattice strips around the canvas, took it up to the community center. And as I was signing in, a woman came in and she saw the painting and began to shed tears. She said, who in the world did this? Well, it was something that meant a lot to me, but it was not what you might say artists would normally show in competition and so forth. But it's one that um, hopefully Jean will pass it on to Shelton if she survives me uh, after she moves off the scene or before. Anyway, I started showing, it gave me a little bit of courage, and I showed in the St. George's Episcopal Church had a religious art festival. And I showed, in my notes I say, I showed at that festival, and I had, Dave, believe it or not, a Presbyterian minister bought the painting called Faith. It was done on, on plywood and oils. And then I had another one with the manger scene and the a cross. I used sand and sawdust with that, the manger scene, and then I had a, a cross in the background, and I called that the gift. And that's so. So I had about $350. And boy, I tell you, that was... I was smoking there. I mean, that was something. <laughs> that was money. That was money. But, and so I, I, I started, started to show in the area. There were very few um, artists in town. There weren't any black artists that I knew. And Mr. Best, I think it is, 
mention at the uh, dinner today we had that th the town is just, he talked about how, how art is here and how much emphasis is placed on it and so forth. I think that was the gist of what he said. And I said, you know, 50 years ago, you could count the artists, you know. Now you go into places and you see art and you have people who have come down from other places in the, on the East Coast or from the West Coast even. And so it has become a town that has favored, uh, that, that's a favorable place for artists. And I know I, I have been blessed. <coughs> Um, now, how did you come about, come up with, with these? I'm going to ask them to turn this off now, and I want to tell you something about each one of these paintings. <clears throat> and you might have to turn your head, <clears throat> because I have a little, uh, a little something about each one. Uh, when I talked with um, Ellen regarding Kilo uh, about <clears throat> what I was going to, how I was going to do it, um, these are social commentaries. I've had students to ask me, white students, Mr. Johnson, do you have any flesh tone? And uh, invariably I would give them a tube of black paint. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, then, then I would have to tell him, I said, now, wait a minute, now, you look at, you look at Marie, you look at Joan, and you look, all three are white, but look at their complexion, it's different. And so, and then, then they would get it, because I like, I don't like to just overwhelm them with racial things, but any time I could mention something that might make all students stop and realize that Basically, for example, when I do a black mother and child, there are quite a few white people who have black mother and child paintings in their, in their homes. And, but I had someone to tell me, said, white people are not going to buy that. I said, well, the feeling that a white mother has about a baby is no different from a black mother or a Jewish mother or a Hispanic mother or a Muslim mother. It's, it's, it's there. You know, when you talk about love, love is, is, is colorblind. And so that has not stopped me from doing things. My wife, in spite of 52 years of living with a fairly decent human being, <laughs> invariably sticks her head out of the door at, at home where I've used the family room as a studio for the last 20 years. And she says, who are you doing that for? I said, Jean, I'm doing it for me. Because she still has not gotten used to the idea that I love art and I love to paint and I'm painting at home instead of the studio so I can be close to you, dear. <laughs> I'm hoping that she'll, she'll see that. But now let's start with the paintings.